On our planet, there seems to be an infinite number of beautiful places one can visit with an equal number of spectacular things to admire. It requires nothing more than a curiosity to observe what is all around you. The miracle of nature manifests in countless ways, from breathtaking vistas to the simple movements of a common heifer. The purpose of this program is to present you with the extraordinary diversity of our miraculous blue planet so that you can discover these things for yourself. Today, we are headed for the Czech Republic and to the region of southern Moravia. Did you really think that orchids only thrive in the tropics? Far from it. These phenomenal and exquisite plants also flourish in the very heart of Europe. Later, we will go back to the Caribbean, to Cuba. Cuba is a place of unbelievable natural beauty and of brutal cockfighting. Then finally, we will visit Fiji in the Pacific Ocean. Its enchanting nature is often untouched by humans, and so it is perceived as a true paradise on Earth. We begin in the Czech Republic. The day in the sculpture workshop of Otomar Oliva begins with a prayer. Only after prayers does he begin the casting of bronze sculptures. Welcome to Slovatsko, a region of southern Moravia in the Czech Republic, in the very heart of Europe. It is a plentiful land, with God-fearing people clinging to their traditions. The sun is rising above Velehrad. The foundations of the monastery originate in the 13th century, but it was considered religiously significant even earlier. In the 1990s, Pope John Paul II made an official visit here, which only added to the status of the monastery. The sculptures originating in the workshop of Master Oliva are world-renowned. Usually, they depict religious motifs. Not surprising, since Southern Moravia is generally accepted to be the most religious region in the otherwise atheistic Czech Republic. The casting is the hardest part of the job. Thorough cooperation is absolutely essential. Traditions are preserved and closely followed. During the working weekdays, People no longer wear richly decorated folk costumes, but during folklore celebrations, you find they follow a very different script. The Vulchnov Ride of the Kings is a concept known around the world. A boy representing the king is chosen as the main character. The king's private party accompanies him on horseback. According to experts in ethnicity, this ceremony is some sort of an initiation ritual, whereby boys become men. Did you believe that only African tribes held such rituals? Not quite. Similar traditions also take place regularly throughout Central Europe. Southern Moravia remains a predominantly agricultural region. During similar festivities, it is easy to understand the locals' obvious appreciation for the land's bounty. Each year, the manual meadow mowing competition is a huge attraction. Naturally, the winner is rewarded with a shot of local schnapps and a lovely song. From honest and passionate, though unschooled voices. The folk songs are beautiful and heartfelt. No wonder they served as inspiration for one of the most famous Moravian composers, Leos Janacek. Slovatsko is well known for both its traditions and for its picturesque nature. The White Carpathian mountain range, lying where the Czech Republic borders Slovakia, is pristine and breathtaking. A war memorial was erected here in memory of the 28 American pilots that died in 1944 during the Battle of Slavicin. Sweeping vistas across stunning landscapes have inspired countless local poets to write touching verses, showering praise to the beauty of the countryside. Unique flora abounds here. Did you believe that orchids only thrive in the tropics? Far from it. Some of the most rare species of these fascinating plants flourish on the surrounding meadows. This happens to be an exquisite wild rose. 
A lovely and rare orchid with the poetic name Lady Slipper is prized by the local population. Sadly, it is the most endangered species of flora found in Moravia. Myriad flower species, resplendent with color, make these meadows an endless source of natural wonder. Mowing here must be done manually using only scythes so as to protect such beauty. The mowers no longer enjoy as many spectators as they did during the popular mowing matches, but their work is no less rewarding. Thanks to their labor and dedication, the rare flora of the White Carpathian Mountains is preserved for future generations. Beautiful flowers, however, are not the only privilege of Slovatsko. The service tree is very unique this tree cannot be found anywhere else within the Czech Republic. It is impossible to plant the service tree. In order for it to reproduce, its fruit must first pass through the digestive system of a bird. The service tree is a kind of rowan berry. The locals make fantastic compotes and an excellent schnapps from its fruit. The making of fruit schnapps is an ancient tradition in Slovatsko. They can make it from practically any fruit, apples, pears, apricots or peaches. Surely though, Slivovitz is by far the most characteristic local homemade spirit. It is made from plums, locally known as blackthorn. The sour made from fruit is distilled twice in the small still. These stills are to be found all over Slovatsko. The result is a very strong spirit with the alcohol content being anywhere between 40 and 80 percent. Since the best Slivovitz usually has an alcohol volume of about 50 percent, it is often diluted with water. Slovatsko is also a wine region. Predominantly, white wine is cultivated using both Rhine Riesling and Pinot grapes. The pride of the region is the delicious Moravian Muscat. It was cultivated right here in Poleshovice. The giant sequoia is yet another local wonder. This huge tree may live up to 3,000 years. This particular tree was planted here in Chabanj in 1872, none dare to guess how long it will live. It is a very healthy tree indeed. In 1972, it was struck by lightning and split in two, yet here it stands today. Amazing. Now we have reached Hana, another plentiful region of the Moravian province. In this region, we find the regal town of Olomots, the river Morava affects these fertile fields, bringing moisture to all sorts of crops grown here. An immense plain stretches in between the Buchlovske Mountains in the south and Jezeniki in the north. This is a local specialty. Not to worry, they're not making opium from the poppy seeds in Hana. These seeds are ground and mixed with sugar to make a lovely cake and pie filling. Even though Moravia is more of a wine region, hops are also grown here. Hops are a very characteristic Czech plant from which the world-renowned Czech beer is made. More poppies. If the truth be told, in the old days, its sole purpose wasn't just an ingredient in local delicacies. It was also commonly used to make a mild concoction given to children as a sleep aid. Hops have a similar effect. No wonder then that in Hana, a pleasantly lazy ambiance often prevails. Watch out for this bridge. It is found in Litovel and was built in 1592, which makes it the third oldest bridge in the country Sadly, it was damaged in the tragic floods of 1997. Those floods were the worst to have hit the Czech Republic in the last 1,000 years. The reconstruction works carried out on this bridge, unfortunately, weren't the best. This is it, River Morava, the culprit who brought the havoc and destruction in 1997. It appears pretty harmless now, flowing and meandering lazily through the alluvial forests. 
All sorts of freshwater fish thrive in its waters. No wonder its crooks are considered a fishing paradise. The most picturesque Czech castle, Bozov, lies close to Litovel. In the 19th century, it was converted from a fortress into a beautiful and romantic castle. Stones throw away from Bozov lie the Yavorzhitske Caves. It is an incredibly intricate complex of mighty domes, abysses, and cracks. Geologists have mapped about 4,000 meters of corridors. The underground area is divided into three stories with up to 40 meter height differences. The caves are decorated with stunning stalactites. The most amazing stalactite formations are to be found in places bearing poetic names. The Detritus Dome, Dome of the Giants, and Fairy Tale Cave. The unique formations within the caves, called the eccentric stalactites, are found here. These formations seem to defy gravity as they grow into the shape of a bent tube. The formations are caused by wind currents that often sweep through the cave system. Dripping water created magnificent diagrams on the cave walls. The most interesting formation by far is the so-called curtain. It is a rather peculiar, thin formation that appears to light up red due to its high iron content. The sun sets over Hana, and we say our goodbyes. Welcome back to the Caribbean. Today, we are in Cuba, in a region called Pinar del Rio. The red crabs offer an incredible spectacle as they roam sideways all over the place. These crabs normally live inland, but during the mating season, they troop to the seashore in great numbers. Thousands of these fascinating little creatures cover several kilometers on their pilgrimage to the coast. There are apparently no barriers that will stop their mission. They seem quite frightening. Perhaps if Alfred Hitchcock lived in Cuba, he might have written a horror about crabs instead of his famous birds. Imagine the mayhem should thousands of crabs suddenly materialize in the city streets. Crabs haven't got it easy. On their way to the mating grounds, a number of roads stand in their way. Not every driver manages to avoid them. The vultures lurk nearby, waiting for a tasty treat. Cuba has plenty of natural miracles to bestow. There are colorful wildflowers seemingly everywhere, and pineapple. Despite a common misconception, Pineapples do not grow on palm trees, but rather resemble a sort of cactus. Pineapples are grown on expansive plantations in Pinar del Rio. Besides intriguing fauna and flora, Pinar del Rio also offers picturesque nooks with streams meandering through the jungle among all kinds of palm trees and other tropical vegetation. It is undeniable that this is the Caribbean. In many places, the streams create high waterfalls that wash out holes in the surrounding rocks. The flora found in Pinar del Rio is so beautifully colorful, it is almost heart-stopping.
The vultures also seem to indulge in the sleepy afternoon siesta. Actually, they are merely patiently awaiting their next meal to come along, partially alive or completely dead. Everyone rests, animals included. This is the Matanzas province, a land of palm groves and orange plantations. Matanzas lies in the west of Cuba. Its northern shore is bathed by the waters of the Gulf of Mexico and its southern shore by the Caribbean Sea. Cuban oranges are famous in their own right. While being rather difficult to peel, they are filled with the sweetest nectar. The largest orange plantations in Cuba are in the vicinity of Yagüe Grande. The Matanzas province is also known for its cockfighting contests. Despite being illegal, it is a deeply rooted tradition. The fights take place regularly in a palm grove just outside of town in a location only known as Mame. It is a cruel pastime, but one the locals find incredibly fascinating and entertaining. The only consolation is that the cocks selected for these fights have a hero status and, in between fights, are treated as royalty. Needless to say, the owners of champion cocks win an attractive amount of cash. It's a rather risky investment, as wild betting takes place and anyone can win or lose. The referee lifts the cage separating the opponents and the cocks charge at one another. The spectators wildly support their favorite. Some root for their favorite in very peculiar ways. The cocks are equipped with special spurs for the fight. These are extremely sharp and are manufactured from turtle or other animal shells. The contest is over and the winner is clear. Cock blood is rinsed away by the rough sea bathing the shores of the Matanzas province. Its center is a town of the same name with some 100,000 inhabitants. It used to be the sugar industry and trading center of Cuba. This is where we bid Cuba goodbye. Welcome to Fiji. It is an isolated archipelago of 322 islands of either volcanic or coralline origin, situated in the tropical zone of the Pacific Ocean. The almost bottomless ocean washes the shores of this fairy tale place. tropical sun scorches the land. Palm trees, in particular coconut palms, make up the vast majority of the local vegetation. More than half of its area is covered in tropical rainforest growth. Turquoise sea contrasts with the lush greenery and creates mesmerizing scenery. The islands were inhabited more than 3,000 years ago. The exact origins of the first inhabitants of the islands of Fiji remain a mystery. What is clear, however, is that Fiji was settled by two distinct races, today known as the Melanesian and Polynesian races. The European exploring expeditions discovered Fiji in the 17th century. Europeans settled here only in the 19th century. The islands first came under the British administration as a colony in 1874, and in 1970, Fiji gained independence. Warm wind from the sea ruffles tropical vegetation. 
the foaming ocean washes sandy and rocky beaches alike. The boughs of trees form intricate tangles. Owls, parrots, reptiles, and insects make up the indigenous fauna of the islands. Mammals, such as horses, were only brought to the islands by settlers. Unique sand dunes are to be found near the town of Sigatoka. The wind spills the sand in the dunes as in an hourglass. No signs of civilization, only virgin nature. This is Fiji, one of the gems of the Pacific. A stunning rainbow arches above the ocean. We are watching it from the island of Vitilevo, the biggest of the islands that make up Fiji. The ocean forever bathes the shores of Fiji. The scorching sun slowly begins its descent. The setting sun colors the clouds with all sorts of breathtaking hues. The tropical climate in Fiji ensures a particularly favorable environment for a wide variety of richly colored flowers. The mountain range in the distance states clearly that Fiji is mostly of volcanic origin. It is truly a fantastic scene. Peter Jackson could have chosen Fiji as the setting for his Lord of the Rings trilogy. This really isn't far off from the idyllic Hobbiton. One last peek at the fascinating flora of Fiji. We bid Fiji farewell from one of its smaller islands, one that measures only a couple of hundred meters across. Our journey to the miraculous nooks of our planet comes to an end for now. On the next exploration of our compelling and bountiful planet Earth, we will travel to the Holy Land, Israel. We will start in the south and work our way to the north. Along the way, we will stop to admire several locations. Some of the stops will take us to incredible works of nature, while others are the setting of biblical tales. We will also present places that are associated with historical turning points. In the north of Israel, we will climb the Golan Heights, whose natural beauty, sadly, is overshadowed by the ongoing conflict. That's all right here on Miracles of Nature.
We hope you'll join us.